Hello there and welcome back to another one of my thrilling videos. It's great to be back. So today, without further ado, I'm going to be talking to you about the Atomos Ninja Star, about why I purchased it and my total misunderstanding about what this product was actually providing me. Um, I'm going to try and make this video quite succinct. Um, I'm probably going to be prone to a few errors because I'm still trying to understand uh, the terminology. But um, if anybody would like to correct me, uh, please pop it in the comments below. Uh, and just for clarity today, I'm filming this on my recently acquired, I say, uh, yeah, recently second-hand acquirement, uh, the OMD EM1 Mark II, and I'm using some Rode Wireless Go mics. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think of the video quality. So um, as you can see over here, you've got my Sony HVR uh, Z5e, uh, which if you're not familiar with the channel, I made a recent comparison video um, around this camera. I absolutely love this camera, although it came out in 2008 and there are areas where maybe it's showing its age, um, I absolutely love it. So when I had this camera, I started to get a little bit kind of obsessed about kind of what the optimal output uh, of this camera could be. What, what could I push this camera any further? And I kind of was starting to explore explore that I suppose and um, if I just show you here so I, I would be playing around with this camera playing around with the settings looking around the camera and then suddenly uh, one afternoon I kind of started thinking I'm just going to show you here about the HDMI and the capabilities um, I started to wonder about well I wonder if I can record via the HDMI um, and to my great excitement I found out that yes there was a way that you could record external to the camera. Now, before I get into that, I just want to talk about what this camera, you know, is able to do. So this camera, you can still record um, onto a tape cassette, but you also have the option to record on this unit on the back, which is called the HVR MRC1, which is in that video I spoke about earlier. Um, and this records onto a CF card. Now, as I understand it, Oh, touch the microphone there. As I understand it, um, this records in 8-bit, um, and we'll get into that in a little while. But effectively, whenever you record anything internally on this camera, it records in 8-bit. And if I understand this right, um, the bit rate um, is uh, 420. If I'm getting those wrong, please correct me down below. Now, upon um, doing a little bit of research, I stumbled upon the Atomos Ninja Star. Now I can't quite remember how I came to learn about it, but the thing that I was looking for was a device that was capable of me plugging an HDMI in one end and an HDMI, HDMI out into the other end and allowing me to record. Because in my mind at that point, I thought it was going to provide me with an even better resolution, so more pixels. So I got really excited about that. Um, and that is how I stumbled upon the Atomos Ninja Star. Fortunately, I didn't really do my research. So I kind of was looking around trying to find one of these, thinking, well, well, you can connect an HDMI to it, so brilliant. And uh, because I didn't do my research, I misunderstood it. So finding one of these was actually really, really difficult. And I ended up um, sourcing one from eBay for, I think it was about 200 pounds. Um, with it, I got some spare batteries, a little connection to the camera. And you also um, got an adapter um, for the memory card um, that comes uh, with the Atomos Ninja Star. Um, pretty straightforward, it's just USB, put the card in there. Now, differently to the card in the back of the HVR MRC1, which is a CF card, um, Atomos designed their own CFAST cards, um, which can um, process data at a much quicker rate because of the fact that they have to record in higher data rates. So when you're recording onto this, the file sizes are gonna be bigger. So that's kind of a trade-off that you have to take, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. So I get my Atomos Ninja Star, and then I find out that I have to get um, a large HDMI cable with a uh, micro HDMI um, on the other end because the Atomos Ninja Star, as you can see, only accepts micro HDMI. Um, so I had to order myself one of those cables um, and I got one of these fancy right angle ones. Uh, so basically the big end going into the back of the uh, Z5e and the small part going into the Atomos Ninja Star. 
So I got that, I felt great, fantastic. I'm gonna test this out and I, and I test it out and it was working fine. It was pretty easy to get to grips with, but everything looked the same. <laughs> Nothing really looked any different. And I'm thinking to myself, well, okay, what, what have I bought here? Um, so then that's when I started to do a little bit more research, which I should have done beforehand. Um, and I stumbled um, onto Atomos's website, but with something I, I, I never found this before. It was basically telling you what um, pieces of equipment are compatible with the Atomos Ninja Star. And I don't know how I didn't find this before, but there's an actual page that talks about the uh, Z5e. So I'm now gonna stop here and I'm gonna put the screenshot up onto the screen and I'm gonna talk to you about that now. So as you can see here, this is Atomos's support page and basically it outlines all of the cameras that are compatible with the Atomos Ninja Star. And um, as you can see here, here's a picture of the camera. And then as you scroll down, you get more information about um, what the Atomos Ninja Star can do uh, in, in conjunction with the camera. And here we have it on the product specifications for the Sony HVR Z5. If we have a look uh, down the specifications, we can see first and foremost, the HDMI connector type full, HDMI true. So effectively, if you're using the HDMI to record, you're gonna get the best possible capture um, in relation to obviously your picture, and as it says there, the color space. Now, as we talked about before, you're not getting a better resolution, but if we look at the internal, and the output recording, you can see there is a difference in the color space. In the standard mode, uh, which is the internal, you're getting a color space of 420. Whereas if you're doing it via output uh, or via HDMI, then your color space is 422. So effectively, by using the HDMI in conjunction with the Atomos Ninja Star, you are improving your color space and therefore you have more manipulation over the colors in your picture. So. As you can see, um, this is a capable um, little thing and it can record as far as I understand in 10 bit as well. But unfortunately, as we talked about, this camera can only um, externally record in 8 bit. But as you saw, it does enable me to record in 422. So what that basically allows me is to capture slightly more color in the picture. It's not about resolution, it's about color because as I've started to understand, um, creatives may want to be able to cut, capture, you know, really rich colors or really dull colors. And when you're recording in 420, there's only so much available color. Um, I can't remember if I said this earlier, but I'm gonna put links below um, about uh, bit rates um, so that people watching this can get a better understanding of it because I would do a terrible job at explaining that. But in one way, it's positive because, you know, if I want to go out and film something uh, with the uh, Z5e, then what I do know is that if I record onto the CF card via the Atomos Ninja Star, then what I will be getting is um, more, I guess, more colour in the images, or at least I would be able to manipulate the colour more as opposed to something that's recorded in 420. Um, so I guess I'm learning as I'm going, um, but I still kind of wanted to test out um, if I could notice any difference in color. Now, as somebody is an amateur, what I decided to do was go somewhere where there was maybe bright lights, different colors, uh, things that are moving around to try and see if I could capture anything uh, different to my eye because I'm still learning. So um, what you'll see shortly is I, took, I went to my local boxing gym, which, which is where I go, so I'm fit and healthy. <laughs> um, and what I did is, um, I've made um, a video comparison for all of you that are watching. So effectively, what you're gonna see is exactly the same video clip. So one recorded on the CF card from the uh, MRC1, and the other one recorded from the CFAS card from the Atomos Ninja Star. And all I've done is it's exactly the same film clip, edited to be exactly the same length, and what I've done is I've put them um, in a comparison. You're seeing exactly the, the same video. One side is the uh, Ninja Star and the other side um, is the MRC1. So I've color corrected a few of these. I've used some presets that I've got. And then the one at the very end is basically, is the video uncorrected. Um, so, I hope that kind of makes sense. It's, a, it's been a little bit of a busy week for me and I kind of wanted to get this video up for you. But effectively, um, 
the Atomos Ninja Star doesn't increase the resolution of your footage, incorrect. But if you are able to record externally out of your camera, it can record in generally higher bit rates. So whilst this wasn't recording in a 10 bit rate, which is what I was expecting, it was still recording in an eight bit rate and it was giving me 422. This camera can only record internally in 420. So I think that that's kind of what I've learned. It can allow you to capture the best quality out of your camera. And I, what I would say as well is that if this was to fail, if this camera was to fail, or you couldn't afford an MRC1, then, um, or, or maybe I should rephrase that, if you found this camera and the tape was damaged and you couldn't use tapes and you couldn't afford an MRC1, you can still use this camera with the Atomos Ninja Star. So this is quite handy so that uh, older cameras can still be used. And because I'm kind of big into recycling old cameras, I think that people need to consider that as well. Like this, as long as it's got an HDMI out on the camera, just pick up an Atomos Ninja Star and, uh, and you can still use the camera, which I think is fantastic. So um, anything else I'd like to say, um, what I did find when I was editing this is that the images from the uh, CF card um, come out in a bizarre file, file, file format and you have to put an S on the end of the file format um, in order to make it compatible with Macs. Whereas this works like that. The file sizes are bigger, um, but it works like that. And also when I'm dragging and dropping um, the footage in, I was finding that it was slower from the CF card, but as I said, it was like lightning um, with the CFast card images or video that I got. So um, have a look at the video. Um, I hope that this video helps or at least <laughs> makes sure people out there don't make the same error that I did and pick up the Atomos Ninja Star hoping to give me better resolution. That's incorrect. Um, if you'd like me to do a more in, a more detailed look at this, um, I'm happy to do it. I know it was a little bit of a whistle stop tour, but um, I wanted to get the content made for you. So let me know your thoughts. And this is me signing off and I'll see you next time. See you later. Thank you.